And we begin with the developing story. Freeport police officers shoot and kill an African-American man they say was armed. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us. I'm Don T. And I'm Melinda Spaulding. The shooting has sparked angry protests in the community. Fox 26's Andrea Watkins is live tonight in Freeport. Andrea. Melinda and Don, the police shooting happened in the apartment complex behind me here in Freeport. Of course, it is calm right now where we are, but when we arrived this afternoon, it was a very volatile scene. Now, there was a large group gathered. There were many people yelling at the police officers, cursing at them. The protest grew quickly after word got out that a man had been shot and killed by a Freeport police officer late this morning, a 32-year-old black man named Ronald Sneed. Police say they were called to that apartment by a neighbor who heard a door being kicked in and then a big argument between a man and a woman. When police arrived, there were several people in the apartment, including, they say, teenage children. Then police say they found the suspect in a bedroom sitting on the side of the bed with a woman who was his common-law wife laying beside him. Now you're going to hear what the police say happened, and then you're going to hear from Sneed's very distraught mother on what she believed happened. They could not see his hands when they came in contact with him. The officer, hit, you know, made several commands to see his hands. The uh, suspect then brought up his hands, at which time he had a firearm in his hand, an automatic pistol in his hand. They again continued to yell commands, and at which time he turned toward the female who was lying in the bed next to him, pointed the gun at her, at which time, fearing for her safety and her life, he discharged his weapon. It was just him and his girlfriend got into an argument, and the girl, the neighbors called the police, and he in there on the couch sitting. They kicked the door in and went in on him. They say they thought they heard, they thought he had a weapon, which in fact, he didn't have anything, which is what every, this is all the time, repeat, repeat, history repeating itself, didn't have a thing. And they shot him four times in the head and assassinated him. I can assure you that uh, our officers are highly trained to do the right thing. Um, without going into further detail, the female involved actually praised the officers for saving her life. Okay, but the mother says the police have ignored her and not tried to explain anything. And the man who was the loudest protester in the tan coat we're showing you here says he's a local community activist named Manny Rollerson. He says he was told by a city official that the police officer was wearing a body camera and that the city official did claim that the video would show the shooting was justified. Now, Freeport police would not confirm or deny that there was a body camera or any video whatsoever. They said, though, it would be up to the Brazoria County uh, District Attorney's Office when that would be released and that most likely it wouldn't be released until the grand jury had heard the case. But they say until then, they hope that the community will give them the opportunity to present that evidence and show that the officer is justified. A community activist who's often highly critical of law enforcement is actually siding with officers. Local 2's Jennifer Bauer live in Freeport tonight with this story. Jen? Well, things here at the Freeport Police Department are all quiet now, Dominique, but that wasn't the case earlier. And tempers were flaring after a Freeport police officer shot and killed 31-year-old Ronald Sneed inside this apartment. Family, friends, and neighbors started to gather, angry with law enforcement over what they say was an unjustified shooting. They shot him four times in the head, talking about he reached for something. Desmond Nelson was Sneed's cousin. Their family got community activist Quan Lex to come meet with them. And together, they all marched from the apartment complex to the police station. They wanted to make a statement, even protest the shooting. But after meeting with law enforcement, Quanell told everyone to peacefully go home. I'd be the first one to say, let's, let's protest, let's crank this place up. Let's go against these crooked cops if this was the case. But this is not the case. Investigators say they were called to this apartment complex because Sneed kicked down the door and was arguing with his girlfriend inside and at one point put a gun to her head. They yelled numerous times for the uh, suspect to show his hands. The suspect then uh, produced a firearm uh, in one of his hands. It's unfortunate the police have just pulled the triggers in this case, but they had no choice. Fox 26's Maria Corrales is live in Freeport. She explains what made the mood change. Maria? 
That's right, Don. The tension changed in this incident when the victim actually told police officers they had saved her life. She explained to investigators and to community activists that she had been having marital problems with her common-law husband for quite some time, and it all came down to a gun being pointed to her head. It seemed like the story was about to repeat itself. Another officer involved shooting, this time in the small town of Freeport. A mob of upset people were cursing and screaming at officers after finding out that 32-year-old Ronald Sneed had been shot several times inside an apartment at the Garden Villa complex. Didn't have a thing. And they shot him four times in the head and assassinated him. As crime scene investigators gathered evidence and interviewed witnesses, the upset crowd grew not just at the scene, but in front of the Freeport Police Department. But hours later, the tension of the incident took a turn. She says when she woke up, he had a gun in her face. Police say it all started with a disturbance call to the home. When officers arrived, several teenagers told them Sneed was in the back room arguing with his common-law wife. Uh, they asked him several times to see his hands. The suspect then raised his hands, at which time the officer saw a uh, automatic pistol in his hand. They again yelled for him you know, to drop the weapon, at which time the suspect then pointed the weapon at the female in the bed. Fearing for her safety, the officer shot Sneed several times, killing him at the scene. Family members consoled each other after learning the details. The story could have been different. He could have killed her. Mm -hmm. That's true. Very true, and it still would have been a tragedy. The female involved actually praised the officers for saving her life. Help this mother and this family bury this young man. Community activist Quano X spoke to investigators and the common law wife at the police department and minutes later made a plea to demonstrators. I'm asking everybody to be peaceful. The Brazoria County Sheriff's Office will now take over the investigation. Hello, Nick Carson. Thank you for joining us. Quano X says that an officer involved shooting in Freeport yesterday that left a man dead appears to have been justified. That admission from the community activist is in sharp contrast to other cases of officer involved shootings. Eyewitness News reporter Tracy Clements in our newsroom with a story that's all new at 630 tonight. Tracy? Yeah, Quanell X surprised a lot of people yesterday when he said the officer didn't have a choice when he shot Ron, Ron Sneed inside that Freeport apartment. Today, we sat down for a few minutes to talk more about that with Quanell X, and he also opened up about what this officer involved shooting taught him. In these shootings, officers should be indicted for killing these unarmed men. But in a case like this, I don't think protests are warranted, and I believe that we should pray for the police officers as well as the family involved in this case. Shocking words to some from Quanell X, the activist considered by many to be one of the most controversial figures in Houston. X says he heard several stories about the shooting while he was on the way to Freeport Wednesday, but he got the real story straight from Ron Sneed's girlfriend, who told him she woke up to a gun in her face. She said when the police came in, the police told him, put the gun down, put the gun down. And he said no, then turned the gun back toward her head and pointed at her head. And that's when the police officer fired the shots to kill him. X tells me Freeport's police chief let him see the crime scene, and that went a long way. The way he worked with the community instantly to deal with what was happening, the way he gave me unprecedented access to a lot of the facts that I could see for myself, was able to suppress and quell a lot of the anger, the frustration, and the desire to riot. As Ron Sneed's family deals with his death, upset that the officer didn't use pepper spray or a taser, and that officer deals with the fact that he took a life to save one, Quanell X says it reminded him that jumping to conclusions helps no one. It was a learning experience for me to make sure that we, and as, as leaders of our people, we have to make sure that as quick as we possibly can, gather as much of the facts as we can and be very skeptical of what you hear. Investigate the facts for yourself as best as you can, as quick as you can, then take a position. Quanell X also talked about the problems many perceive in the relationship between predominantly black communities and police and how both can make some changes to fix it. It was high, an angry crowd gathering to question why another African-American man was shot by police. The situation was so volatile, it could have easily gotten out of control. 
Everyone now knows the Freeport officer saved a woman's life after her teenage son called 911. 911. Uh, can I get the cops over here? We have uh, my mom's boyfriend. He's been beating on her, and then today he just came to keep the door. And he's in the house now. He don't want to leave. After the officer felt forced to shoot that man, the chief made two quick decisions that calmed that angry crowd. New tonight, our Jeremy Diesel sat down with the police chief and the community activist who became an ally. Freeport balanced on a razor edge. A young black male shot dead by police inside a dark apartment. It was about to boil over and I was receiving text messages from some of those out there at the scene saying we're about to riot. Rumors running wild in minutes, residents and police on edge. People want a story and they're going to fill the gaps in if they don't have it. Community activist Quan LX raced to Freeport ready for a fight like too many we've seen all over the country. My mind was, it's enough of this. I'm sick and tired of these brothers being killed. It's time we stand up and fight them the same way they fight us by any means necessary. That was my attitude. And that was the right crowd for it. But this time, the rabble rouser turned peacemaker. Where we can put the truth out, sometimes some people won't heed that, won't recognize that. But coming from a source like him, putting the information out, it's acted upon. Freeport Police Chief Daniel Pennington had never met Juan LX, only knew him by reputation. The two men surprised each other. To be that open, that quick, I kind of felt, this is strange. It does seem a foreign concept, you know, just off the top of it. The tense situation chilled with two key decisions. Choosing to let Quan LX examine the shooting scene after the crime scene was cleared and meeting with Quan L, the mother of the person who was shot and his girlfriend for one reason. Truth doesn't do you a whole lot of good if they're not willing to listen to it. And again, coming back to him, that's why he was so vital in this deal. Within minutes of Quanell telling those gathered what he now believed just hours after the shooting, no riots, just quiet. One thing remains. It's a tragedy. There's no way around it. That Their lives have been changed forever. The officer's life has been changed forever. 24 hours after that shooting, there could just as easily have been hundreds, if not thousands of people here on the front steps of the Freeport Police Department. Instead, only one person came by. No protest. I'm sorry for my behavior yesterday. That's, it wasn't me to act, conduct myself like that. An apology from Clarence Jonikin, uncle of the man police shot, Ron Maynard Sneed. All I wanted from the start was just the truth, whether it was my nephew's fault or the police fault. Freeport and Ferguson have plenty in common, starting with a police shooting, but... Take that same chief into Ferguson, it never would have happened. I'm asking everybody now to go ahead and go home. A very different end. In Freeport, Jeremy Diesel, KHOU, 11 News.